This is a semester two final exam review part four. In chapter eight on polar coordinates, one of the things we talked about were complex numbers in the form a plus bi, but we set them equal to z. And then we said that the modulus, which was also the absolute value of the complex number, was just the square root of a squared plus b squared. Wait a second, that looks like a familiar formula. I feel like it almost looks like it's the Pythagorean theorem. We also talked about the polar form of complex numbers. And this only worked for complex numbers. People were trying to do this with non-complex numbers. The polar form of a complex number a plus bi is z equals r cosine of theta plus i sine theta, where r was just the modulus. And theta is the inverse tangent of b over a. Z has a special name. It's called the argument. So let's look at this problem. We want to express Z equals 2 the square root of 3 minus 2i in polar form. Well, in order to do that, the first thing we have to find is the modulus. That's our R, which is the absolute value of Z, which is going to be the square root of A squared plus b squared. And notice that b is really negative 2, not positive 2. So when you square 2 the square root of 3, you get 12. When you square negative 2, you get 4, which is the square root of 16, which is 4. So the modulus is 4. Then I need to find what theta is. And the tangent of theta is going to be b over a. As long as you're careful when you put this in your calculator, do the inverse tangent of negative 2 divided by 2 square root of 3. And I would put my calculator in degree mode, find the angle in degrees, and then change it to radians. The calculator is going to tell you the answer is negative 30 degrees, which is negative pi over 6. However, we don't use negative pi over 6. We use its fourth quadrant terminal angle, the coterminal angle, which is going to be 11 pi over 6. So now I know r, now I know theta, now I can write the complex number as 4 cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i sine of 11 pi over 6. What if I wanted to go the other direction and express a polar coordinate in a complex form? Well, the easiest way to do this is to just evaluate the cosine and sine. So the cosine of 3 pi over 4, anything pi over 4 for both sine and cosine is square root of 2 over 2. But it depends on what quadrant you're working in. 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2, and in quadrant 2, cosines are negative. So it's negative square root of 2 over 2 plus i, and the sine of 3 pi over 4 is also square root of 2 over 2, but sines are positive in quadrant 2. Then all I have to do is distribute, and I find out that this is the complex form of the polar coordinate 3 cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. Another problem that ends up on the final, and I don't know if we did this in homework, is finding the distance between polar coordinates. It's actually an easy formula, and I'll put it on the formulary sheet. It looks, it, it basically it's the uh, law of cosines, is what I should say. You should recognize this as the law of cosines. So in order to find the distance between two polar coordinates, use the law of cosines. Now, you, this is a problem where you need to check what mode you're in. So if I ask you to find the distance between 3, 3 pi over 4, and 1, 7 pi over 6, you should probably be in radian mode. 
However, if you want to change those radians to degrees, this is 135 degrees, and 7 pi over 6 would be 210 degrees, then you would be in degree mode. I actually just shoved this in my calculator exactly the way that I saw it, and I used the degrees, so I did the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 3 times 1 times the cosine of, and it doesn't matter if you do 135 minus 210 or 210 minus 135, and I found out the answer was approximately 2.91. Now, this formula is much easier to use than going back and changing these two rectangular coordinates and then finding the distance formula using the distance formula. You can if you want, but it is much easier to use this formula. And again, I will just give you this formula on the formulary sheet. The last thing that we talked about in the polar coordinate chapter was something called parametrics. Parametrics were one where you looked at how values changed over time and you watched the direction of travel of the graphs. And you can start with two equations in parametric mode, x equals t squared and y equals t minus 2 and rewrite it as a single equation by eliminating the parameter. What I want to do is I want to plug x into this equation. So in order to do that, I'm going to solve this equation for t. t is the square root of x. Therefore, I'm going to write the equations y equals the square root of x minus 2. So I claim to you, if you graph this on your calculator in parametric mode, you should get the exact same graph as y equals the square root of x minus 2. So on the final, if you aren't sure if you picked the right solution, what you can do is change your calculator to parametric mode, graph the two equations, look at what the graph looks like, and then find which multiple choice answer has the same graph. In Chapter 9, we studied vectors, and one of the things we talked about was how you could take two ordered pairs and write them in component form of a vector. But you have to know which, which uh, ordered pair is your initial point and which is your terminal. The way it worked was you would do terminal minus initial, comma, terminal minus initial. And it kind of works like your x's and y's. So you would subtract the x's to get your first component, and you would subtract your y's to get the second component. But it has to be in the order terminal minus initial. So 5, 7 would be your component form. Remember that tells you how to find the length of the vector. It doesn't tell you where the point on the actual vector starts and stops because we can draw several vectors on the same coordinate plane that are all the same vector but in different locations. Vectors in component form work like any of your other real numbers. So if vector u is 2, 7 and vector v is 3, 1, to find 3u minus 4v, first we'd find 3u, and 3u is going to be 6, 21, because you just distribute. 4v is going to be 12, 4, and then we subtract these. And when you subtract them, you just subtract the common components. So 6 minus 12 is negative 6. 21 minus 4 is 21, 20, 19, 80, 17. And that's all you have to do. If vector v is a, b, then the magnitude or length of the vector is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we write the magnitude of the vector as the absolute value of the vector v. There's that formula again. The Pythagorean theorem just seems to keep popping up everywhere. So if I want to find the magnitude of the vector whose 
initial point is negative 8, negative 6, whose terminal point is negative 1, negative 1. First, I need to find the vector. So vector PQ is going to be the x's, terminal minus initial, terminal minus initial. So it's going to be 7, 5. Then to find its magnitude, I'm going to do the square root of 7 squared plus 5 squared, which is 49 plus 25, which is the square root of 74. And I'll just leave it like that because I do not believe that the square root of 74 can be simplified. Another way to do component form of a vector is to find the horizontal and vertical components. Remember that vector AB can also be written in unit vector form. So we can also write it as A vector I plus B vector J, where vector I is the unit vector on the x-axis, and J is the unit vector on the y-axis. It is the vector of length 1. So component A can be found by doing the magnitude of V times the cosine of theta, and magnitude and B can be found by doing magnitude of V sine theta. So if I tell you that the magnitude of V is 40 and theta is 30 degrees, I can find the horizontal and vertical components here. I'll remind you this is horizontal, this is vertical. I can find the horizontal and vertical components of the vector by doing magnitude times the cosine of 30. So that's 40 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is 20 square root of 3. And B is going to be 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. So that's 40 times 1 half, which is 20. So the horizontal and vertical components are 20 square root of 3 vector I plus 20 vector J. Or you can also write it like this, but it just kind of depends on how the multiple choice answers are written on the final. Another thing we learned when we talked about vectors was something called the dot product. If vector u is a1, b1, and vector v is a2, b2, then u dot v is the product of the horizontal components plus the product of the vertical components. I should make that a product. And the answer you get to a dot product is a scalar quantity. So, if I ask you to find the dot product of these two quantities, vector u is i plus 3j, and vector v is 4i minus j. It doesn't matter if I give you the problem at, in unit vector form or in component form. In component form, this would be 1, 3, and 4, negative 1. To find the dot product, you would multiply the horizontal components and add to it the product of the vertical components. So it would be 4 plus negative 3, which is 1. And the answer is a scalar quantity. Sometimes we want to know the angle between two vectors on the coordinate plane. To find the angle between the vectors, we're going to do the inverse cosine, or sorry, the co we're, we are going to do an inverse cosine. But the cosine of the angle between two vectors is equal to the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. So I need to find a couple things. I need to find the dot product. So the dot product of u dot v is going to be 3 times 1 plus negative 2 times 2. That's 3 plus negative 4, which is negative 1. And I also need to find the magnitude. So the magnitude of u is going to be 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. Remember, when you square a negative, it becomes a positive. So 9 plus 4 is the square root of 13. And v is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 5. So now... I'm going to get the cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 over the square root of 13 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 65. So now theta is going to be the inverse cosine of negative 1 over the square root of 65. I would be in degree mode to do this problem. And you're going to find out 
that this is approximately 97 degrees. Two vectors are said to be orthogonal or perpendicular if their dot product is equal to zero. So if I give you vector u is 6, 4, and vector v is negative 2, 3, and I say, are these orthogonal? You need to find the dot product and find out if it's zero or not. So we're going to do 6 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3. That's negative 12 plus 12, which is zero. So yes, they are orthogonal.